coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Shout out to everybody out there on Team Banky Pam, man. I appreciate the love. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom. I appreciate the support. Why ain't nobody tell Jake Paul, man, to duck that hook, man? <laughs> Should have been watching TBP. Man, I appreciate y'all out there, man. I appreciate everybody who rocking with me, man. 33 years of prison stories. We rolling. We rolling. We trying to change some mindsets out there. We trying to save some people, man, some young kings and queens, so let's keep it pushing. Today, man, I'm getting ready to go work out, so y'all see, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm dressed for the go work out. But I wanted to drop this on y'all before I got, got, you know, started today. Um, Something just made me think about this. I'm going to try this on y'all. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments. As always, if you like this, I give you more of it. But what I want to do is I want to uh, debunk. Somebody brought this up in my comments, so you know who you are. So shout out to you. Um, I told you I read them comments, man. Y'all talk to me, man. I talk back. But I wanted to debunk some uh, prison myths, man. Somebody brought that up, and I thought that was a great idea. So I'm going to try it. And um, First, I'm going to start off with three. You know, And um, if y'all want some more, I know by the comments, and y'all let me know. But I'm gonna, I want to talk about these three uh, prison myths. That I know a lot of people heard all these things about prison, you know, but mostly what y'all get from prison to be TV series or movies or things like that. You know, I guess now in this new, you know, age, you know, social media, you get documentaries or whatnot. But a lot of things you heard about prison, it got some truth to it. You know what I'm saying? Not, it may not be all true, but it has truth to it. And a lot of it just be just, you know, fictitious stuff just blowed up. You know, or cliches that's been passed down for year after year, century after century. But um, I want to talk about three of them today, man. I want to talk about three of them and give y'all my, you know, take on it and my opinion, you know what I'm saying, um, of 33 years of experience. But uh, first one I want to talk about is, you know, uh, accepting things from people, you know, in prison. You know, when you just get in. I know y'all always heard the story about... Yo, you know, when you get in there, if you got a candy bar or some candy or tater chips or, you know, honey buns or whatever left on your bunk, then that means that, you know, somebody trying to do something to you. You know what I'm saying? So that right there is probably was some old penitentiary stuff, even way before I got in penitentiary. Um, I don't they actually even show videos about that in prison and telling inmates that this new and stuff and orientation about this and using that as an example. If somebody leaves something on your bunk and you go in there, that usually means they're going to try you, don't accept it, woo, 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 blah, blah, blah. You know, it's, yeah, it's kind of, if i never seen it happen, you know what I'm saying? But I have heard it talked about a lot, a lot, a lot in prison. But I will tell you this about accepting something or anything from somebody in prison. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. You know what I'm saying? Normally, if somebody's offering you something when you first get in there or whatever, you don't know. And it could be somebody that you knew, you know, from your neighborhood, or but they've been in prison a while, or somebody that, that is just from your neighborhood and you just know they're from your neighborhood, or they say they know somebody that you know, and they, they all of that. Now, nah. You know, the bottom line is prison is a place where everybody needs something. Everybody's angling for something. Everybody's trying to get something because we deprived, period, about from everything in prison. That's part of uh, prison, you know, deprivation. If that's a word, you know, uh, you know, you're deprived. So why would anybody just offer to give you something when they probably need something themselves? So usually there's an ulterior motive behind that. You don't know what it may be. It could be this, that, or the third. But my advice is don't take nothing from nobody in prison. Because first and foremost, it ain't nobody got nothing to give away. So if they're giving you something, that means they probably want something. But then you don't know what it is that they want. And then they'll turn around and be thrown back on you. You know what I'm saying? Like, look, man, I gave you, you know, I did this or, you know, I did that for you, you know. And you don't even want to go through that because that's only going to lead to a whole bunch of more larceny and flim flammery, you know, down the line. So 
Yeah, my that taking some or accepting some from somebody in prison, man, is definitely an X, man. That's a no no. That's a no no. Should never do it. You know what I'm saying? Only only way that I would even consider that, or I would tell somebody that's new in prison, if they say they're gonna accept some, if it's somebody that you actually really, really know, is somebody in your family or, or just a family member or somebody that you really knew or you grew up with or whatever. And then, you know, still, like I say, you know, you're in a different environment, you're in a different world, it's different rules, you know, and it's it's, it's um it's just different, you know what I'm saying, period. I don't do it. I don't I don't I ain't never accept nothing from nobody and I really um you know had a real type of attitude towards if you try to offer me something. Because my mentality always is like, I mean, no, I don't need nothing. You know what I'm saying? And I give it out like that, like letting whoever it is know that, you know, whatever it is you think you got on your mind, you better put something else on your mind. So I'd be like, nah, I don't need nothing. Man, you high, you need some of uh, your young blood? Either? Nah, I don't need nothing. Nothing. Zero. Yeah, I'm good. I'm super good. You know, that, that, that would be, you know, my advice about how to handle those type of situations, man. And, um, yeah, because, uh, <laughs> you know why I got nothing to give away in prison, man? It ain't nobody. Even the dudes that seemingly look like they doing good, they ain't really got nothing to give away in prison. And because, you know, you, no matter what it look like in prison, you ain't doing good. You don't even have your freedom. So how could you be doing good? You know what I'm saying? It's a thing they say penitentiary good, penitentiary rich, but what is that? Who wants that? Who wants to be that? You know what I'm saying? You want to be free. You want to be out in the real world. You don't want to be nothing that has penitentiary attached to his name, penitentiary rich, penitentiary famous, penitentiary, you know, certified. Pen you don't want to be nothing that got penitentiary attached to it. Who, what's, what type of aspirations is that? So now nah, I, I, I would say that, 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 that myth right there is true, man. Don't accept nothing from nobody in prison because it most definitely will lead uh, to something else. Absolutely. Um, so that would be number one. Number two, would be the all famous that everybody heard of, everybody and their mama heard, heard about this prison slogan right here. Don't drop the soap. <laughs> Don't drop the soap. You know what I'm saying? If you know anything about prison, you probably heard this a thousand times. And, you know, um, far as, you know, that myth right there is, I think is a little uh, overrated because of, you know the um, you know the the meaning behind it, and it is it, some truth to it about don't drop the soap, but not so much as to what uh people will you know attach to that 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 slogan or that statement or that that cliche. And what I mean by that is, you actually don't want to drop the soap in prison because you in a prison shower, and, and if you've been in prison, everybody who's been in prison know what goes on in a prison shower. So. Anything to touch that floor in a prison shower, man, it's dead. It's gone. So that's that in that aspect, yeah, don't drop the soap because you gotta go get you another bar of soap. Because even though it's soap, you don't even want to pick that up and try to even use that, man. People get in the shower in prison with shower shoes on for a reason. Don't nobody want to touch that flow. <laughs> you don't want to touch the walls. You know, it's just it, the prison showers is got to be one of the most uh Man, it got to be one of the most contaminated places on the on the planet, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It got to be most one of the contaminated places on the planet. Um, it's probably 10 million, 50 million, 100 million babies up in there. You know what I'm saying? It's been aborted. Um, no pun intended. Um, it's just it's just nasty in there, man. It's nasty in there, but it's it's the only way you can, you know, eat. Look, that's 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 a uh, oxymoron in itself. It's nasty in there, but it's really the only place that you can get clean. You know what I'm saying? Because you got to sell it, and you can bury it bad, but that's kind of disrespectful, and it's kind of like interfering with, the, with, you know what I'm saying, with the uh, dynamics in the cell. You're only supposed to really do that when it's, like, locked down or there's no other choice or whatever, whatever, because, you know, you're sharing space with another human being. But... It's the only place you got to get clean, and it's the nastiest place on the compound. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you don't want to drop the soap because you can't pick it up. Now, because the other, the, the myth, the way that they got it, don't drop the soap, or you'll turn into this, or this going to happen, or that's going to happen. 
Yeah, that's kind of like unlikely because whatever, if somebody coming at you like that, it ain't going to have nothing to do with the soap. It ain't going to have nothing to do with, you know what I'm saying, you dropping no soap. They just going to be coming at you like that and you just going to have to deal with that. But it ain't going to be nothing about no soap, man, because that's that's just a myth. That's just the way they say it. You know, I guess they meaning it is in, you know, boom. You know, you don't want to drop no soap. You don't want to be exposed or vulnerable like that, naked in prison. Woo -woo. That part is true, but I ain't never heard nobody in the history of me being in prison say, oh, he dropped the soap and then he was end up, you know, you know, being taken advantage of. I ain't, I ain't never heard of that. You know what I'm saying? I think that's more, you know, uh, you know, talk than it is anything else. You know what I'm saying? But, um, that, that, them showers in prison, man, is, uh, man, they are awesomely filthy. The smell is, 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 whew, is, um, I, you know, in your mind now, it's like when you done been through this stuff so long and you done been in these places so many times, it's like, it's, it's, it, it's in your brain and, you know, even the smell or even the thought of the smell, if you think back to it, you can smell it, you can feel it, you can, you know, you, it, it, it's, it's in you, it's, it's in you because, I've been in a many of them. I had no choice. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, and they and they clean the showers every day, and they still be dirty. You know what I'm saying? They clean showers in prison every day, and they still be dirty because you hire somebody to do that. It's an inmate that does that, and um, he ain't. They ain't. It ain't like nobody is in there taking pride in that job. It ain't like nobody's in there taking pride in that job. They do it for a state job to get that little little uh, measly state money. And then you have dudes that joke on them, so that makes them take even less uh, pride in what they're doing. Dudes be like, oh, man, you, man, get on in there and clean the shower, man. Get on in there and get them babies up, man. Or, yeah, get on in there, man. You And, you know, dudes, t you know, they take offense to that. But like I said, back to, you know, myth number one, you know, everybody in prison needs something. So these dudes need that money. That's why they take that job, because they need that little measly money. And then you're talking about $28 a month. <laughs> yeah, twenty eight dollars a month. You see, what I'm saying that's less than a dollar a day. You know, so that's twenty eight dollars a month for cleaning up showers and stuff. You know that you have to, you know, put that work in to get, and they got to do that just because they need it. No one is doing that because they want to do it. They doing it because they have to do. It. So when somebody's coming to offer you something, try to give you some, you know, it's you know it's cap. Is it, it, you know what I'm saying? It's a motive behind. It. Because everybody in prison needs some. There's no one in there that would be cleaning those showers if they ain't had to do it. There's no one in there that would be mopping no floors if they ain't had to do it. There's no one in there that'd be buffing no floors if they ain't had to do it. These dudes don't have no support coming from the outside. These dudes don't have no hustle or they're too uh, afraid to get into the hustle game because it's violence to come with that hustle game. So, you know, they don't have these things. So this is why they do these things. And then you got the hopping bobs and... The Jeff Bodines and the Chicken Georges, you know, that will... You, well, I don't even want to say Chicken George. See, that's another myth. Everybody say Chicken George as if Chicken George was a chicken. Chicken George was a gangster if you go back and watch Roots. But, you know, you have those type of dudes that's going to do it just because they trying to please the people. They trying to, you know, in some way, shape, and form of their mind, they think if they do all of this, do all that around the penitentiary, that these people going to show them some type of favor or they going to look at them a little different. Nah, they not. They're going to give you the same treatment that they get the next man. So you just, you know, really cutting your own throat because you are alienating yourself away from the rest of the population by them labeling you as a hopping bob type dude. And then these people don't care nothing about you anyway. So you just really just, you know, making yourself, putting, making the situation even worse on yourself and putting yourself in a more dire situation, not even realizing it because that's the way their brain operates. Oh, I do this, I do this. Oh, I be telling and now the police going to protect me or I'm all right. I'm, man, wrong. Yeah, that's wrong too. Don't believe that. You know what I'm saying? You're putting yourself actually in more danger. But um, yeah, that dropping the soap, man, I would have to... Uh, X that and say, you know, that myth is not true, man. It's, it's true, but not for the reasons that most of the masses of people think that it's true. Um, let me see. What else? Third one. Third one for the day. Three of them. I said three. Okay, let's go with this one. Because this one right here, I know they have put this in movies a thousand times. They have said this a thousand times. They put it in TV uh, shows. And um, it is when you first get to prison, 
find the biggest dude that you can find and take off on. Well, <laughs> I can assure you right now, it, that myth right there is definitely uh, an X. <laughs> because if you do that, as soon as you get into prison, then you might not even have to worry about finishing your sentence. <laughs> Yeah, you 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 might not even finish. You might in there. You have to worry about doing the rest of the time, cause you might you you know you might lose your life, man. You know, and you could go into penitentiary and you could be you know thorough. You could be a thorough dude coming into penitentiary. That that, that is you know, cause if you thorough out on the street and you carry it a certain way, if this is really who you are, this is really your persona, how you get down, then that's that's transferable into prison. But you gonna have to be have a whole different skill set in prison. Ain't no guns in prison. I done told y'all that a million times. If you ain't good with these, if you ain't good with this, and if you ain't got that, you're not gonna you're not gonna make it anyway. But if you good with these and you got that and you got this, man, you can survive anywhere on the planet. But coming into prison and not knowing nobody and not knowing the lay of the land, not knowing the dynamics, not knowing how people get in and they're listening to the myths from the street and never been in prison and you come straight in there and you go straight at the biggest dude in there just picking them out just because and try something like that, man, you might die. <laughs> you 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 might die. You know what I'm saying? It just, it just say you prevail in the fight. You just, boom, you, he could come back with that Bethlehem. You don't know nothing about that Bethlehem game in there. You don't know nothing about who he associated with. You don't know who his friends is. You don't know what type of people he got that's going to back his hand. You don't know if somebody else going to put that Bethlehem in you because you coming in there all on that flim flammery. You don't, you don't know none of that. So you can't never go into a foreign land and then just try to automatically put down your thing in a foreign land. It's just like on the street and you selling drugs on the corner or something, and then you go to a whole other neighborhood and just go right on the corner and think you just going to open up shop. Nah, it ain't going to work like that. Different place, different rules. You understand? You have to go into prison and more or less be stay ready so you don't have to get ready. You have to be ready for whatever comes to you, and whenever something comes to you, you got to be willing to demonstrate on cue, boom, without hesitation. That is how you handle your business going into prison. That is how you get respect in prison. That is how you establish your name, your brand, and your reputation in prison. Handling the business when it comes to you. Don't start nothing, but be prepared for anything. But just to go in there and just to take off on somebody just because you heard this is how you do it in prison. Or go to your cell partner and as soon as you get in the cell, you put your stuff down and bam, 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 take off on your cell partner like you trying to you know, prove a point. Man, dude might have been in that cell and waiting for a new person to come in there because he don't know you or he don't know who coming in there just like you don't know what cell you coming into. But he could be a veteran. He could be a veteran in prison and be prepared for new cellars with the coming there with that foolishness. Like the one that came in my cell and popped off, boom, boom. You know, he won't do that no more. Yeah, big mistake. But he could be a veteran that got that Bethlehem in there waiting because he don't know. He could have an enemy coming in there if he been doing time. He could have all of these things are possible. So dudes is prepared, you know what I'm saying, more or less and ready for those type of situations. You know, even I have a situation with me getting the rumbling with the cellar that came in there with that. I was never unprepared when a new cellar came in there. You learn as you go. So these dudes is veterans or something. You go in the cell with a veteran and you put your stuff down and swing on them, you might find yourself in a situation where you up under that Bethlehem and you ain't never had to fight up under that Bethlehem. You might have fought dudes all your life, you know, straight up, but you ain't never had to fight that knife off. You ain't never had to fight no way. Mm, mm, just come, yeah. What you gonna do? And you trapped in a cell. You trapped in a cell. That's asinine. You can die like that. You know what I'm saying? Taking off on the biggest dude in the pod just because. you could. And I was into some of that foolishness. I had got the rumbling with, on a new camp one time with that philosophy. You know what I'm saying? Thank God that, you know, I, I more or less talked, but I didn't go straight up. But I targeted him. I told y'all about that story because I wanted to set a point and all that. But this is after I've been in penitentiary for a couple of years. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, it was asinine and it could have cost me. You know what I'm saying? But to just go straight in there with that, I'm going to take off on somebody just because they the biggest. Man, you know, that the biggest person in there may be the humblest person in there. Or the biggest person in there may be the most dangerous person in there. 
You don't know who he is or what he is. But what you do know is he didn't push nothing at you as of yet. He didn't cause you nothing. And you don't never got to look for problems in prison. Never got to look for problems in prison. Because guess what? It's going to knock on your door. Sooner or later, trouble is going to knock on your door in prison. Just as sure as Grizz's groceries, man. So when you go in there with the frame of mind, when you go in there with the frame of mind that you're looking for trouble just to set an example, you're looking for trouble just because that's what you heard, you're looking for trouble because people tell you the myth is find the biggest, toughest, most dangerous dude in there and let's knock him out. Yeah, you you, you ain't going to make it. <laughs> you ain't going to make it because you got certain dudes in prison, period. If you put your hands on, you got to kill them. You know what I'm saying? You got to kill them or you got to vacate the premises so you don't get killed. So it's, it's, it's just like that, you know what I'm saying? This is a whole different world in here. And a lot of people on the street and a lot of people coming out, they, they spread a lot of myths and a lot of, you know, uh, uh, falsehoods, man. And I told y'all a long time ago, and I'll continue to tell you, misinformed people, misinformed people. You know, but them people with that misinformation is the ones that's most in danger, man, because they use that information as facts and, and then find out later that it's, it, that it's, it's false. It could be too late, you know, to rectify that. You know what I'm saying? It could be it could be entirely too late to rectify that. So, yeah, I, I would definitely not advise that. I would definitely get that. Myth, uh, uh, that's a no. You know what I'm saying? Do not do that. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, the problems are going to find you. You're going to have enough things in prison to deal with. You're going to have enough drama that you're going to go through, enough, you know, violence, enough heartache, enough pain, enough misery, enough uh, mischief, enough flim flammery, skullduggery, larceny, tomfoolery, all of that you're going to go through in prison. All of that is, 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 is a short. I can guarantee you that. The longer you stay there, the more that you're going to have to endure. The longer you stay, the more you would have to endure, and um, it just don't it just don't ease up, man. It's just a it's a, it's a nonstop cycle. So you ain't never got to go in prison looking for no trouble, you know. Especially just to set up to make a point. And I guarantee you, whoever ever said that or whoever ever started that ain't even never been to prison, ain't even never. That's their philosophy. And if they were in that position, they wouldn't do that themselves. Nobody walks into a foreign land, man, a foreign place and just try to automatically take over, man. It, that, that's asinine. You know what I'm saying? That's asinine. I don't care who you are. It's asinine. You know, so, um, yeah, I, I definitely wouldn't do that, man. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even attempt to do that. I would definitely would not try to advise nobody to try nothing like that, man, because that's just crazy. But, um, yeah, I just wanted to... Uh, debunk some of these myths man and hopefully this was informative hopefully y'all got something out of this you know um any questions man talk to me in the comments i talk back let me know i will address them man i will be reading the comments and let me know if y'all like these type of videos give me some suggestions of what things y'all might want to know about about prison and i will uh definitely uh take it in consideration um if I run across it in my comments, man, because like I say, man, this platform is to educate, to uh, motivate, to inspire, and to, um, you know, keep people from, from even ever having to be in these positions, ever having to be in these positions. But then also, too, to inform people who have family members in this position, who know, for they can know what they're going through, so or they can know what to or how to advise them, or they got somebody that's getting ready to go in, and you can advise them, you know, some truth, you know. But the main thing we want to do is we want to just stop these young uh, kings and queens from going in there, man. Stop them from um, submitting their life to this foolishness right here, man. Cause um, uh, it's it's not a good it's not a good life, man. Not a good life at all, you know. So. Anyway, man, y'all let me know what y'all think, man. You know, as always, I value y'all opinion, man. Y'all talk to me, I talk back. In the meantime, in between time, man, y'all be safe, be smart, make good decisions. Go get your workout in the day like I'm getting ready to go do. Your health is your wealth. I don't care how much money you got in the bank, man. If you ain't healthy, you is not wealthy. So um, take care of your health, man, in 2023. Let's get it. Come over there on Bank of Pound. Prison fitness, man, and join me, man, as I get back in the swing and getting back in shape, man. So, uh, you know, we can do it together. 
you know, y'all go check me out on Living Life of a Life podcast, man. And um, pure deliciousness, man. I'm waiting on y'all. I got some more whipping this arm. Um, I got some more whipping this arm. Um, you know, but I appreciate you all. I love y'all out there. TBP, man. Thanks for supporting me. 2023, man. We got a lot more things coming. Book is still on the way. Merch is on the way. Merch is online. Y'all talk to me. I talk back. Be safe. Be smart. Make good decisions. Boom, 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 boom. Duck them hooks, man. They out there. Mop. The bank is special. Yeah, pure delicious. Pure delicious. My name is. Uh... Coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.